Alright guys, uh, <clears throat> how you doing? Welcome to another episode of Biker Sin. Um, today, I just want to, it's not really, uh, you know, that much of a big topic, but every biker should experience this. Uh, I just want to basically show you guys how I ride in traffic and just sort of talk you through some of the thought processes that go through my head. I've seen, you know, quite a few people when they're riding through traffic they're a bit um what's the word i'm looking for just a tiny bit reckless and me i try not to be so say for instance i can see that gap there and i know that i could you know fit right between that bm and that um that van but i'm choosing not to just for the simple fact that i can see that there's a car door open there and if this traffic starts moving I guarantee that that BM is going to try and move over a tiny bit and the last thing I want to do is get squashed now that I, I can see that I've got you know some room there to maneuver I can sort of plan and see where's going to be my best line to take and I'm just going to stick in this line the reason as well why I like to be in this line as well is because it gives me a bit more um, flexibility as to where I'm going to go and it sort of sets me up for my rhythm to start filtering now I didn't want to go through that gap there only because you know it's on a turn and it's a bit difficult to calculate the angle and the last thing I want to do is scratch my bike or hit another car they take a bit of offence to it especially when your wing mirrors hit their their mirrors even though it doesn't do any damage or anything but you know, they just get offended because they don't like us filtering in the first place. And then I would just stop here, only because sometimes, you know, I could, I could probably fit through that gap, but when it's a bit too tight, I would just rather just sit back. Only for the fact that I just don't really want to get myself in any sort of situation that's going to be quite difficult to get out of. Another thing that I do when I'm riding in traffic is that I try to stay in view of the wing mirror only because I've actually noticed that not a lot of cars actually use their rear views they just tend to use the wing mirror and forget about the, the, the centre mirror and I just feel much more safer you know being in either one because if I do you know decide to give it a little pulse on the, the, the um, throttle then at least I know that they will look because that's the first thing they do they always look to the one of the sides just to make sure that nothing's on that side or sometimes on the far I try to avoid being in the far mirror uh, uh, the only times I'm in the far the far mirror is only if um, I have to be there and hopefully I can get into some more traffic over there this is one thing this is just basically going against everything that bikers do I don't like normally go looking for traffic we always try to stay out of traffic but I'm, this is just basically for the purpose of this video so right now I'm just basically trying to analyze and see you know what's going to actually happen and the, the main thing as well is not to get too tunnel visioned on what's going on in front because the cars behind tend to get a bit impatient as well so then they basically just start to um, move up a bit closer and next thing you know you'll be sort of just on the limit of being uh, rear-ended which will not be ideal and also keep a close eye on other motorcyclists as well now because I've, I've, I ride these um, roads quite often I know that this is an actual filtering hotspot so I try not to um, filter too much on here because you just tend to get these scooters that literally just fly past. I'm not sure why they think that they have to do it, but literally they just like just hoon it coming between cars, and I'm thinking, shit, like why do you guys have to ride so recklessly? 
Like, even if you're keeping it at a slow speed, you'll still get to where you're going, bruh. The traffic looks like it's freeing up a bit. And this guy, I don't know what he's doing. His indicator's on, but he's just not even making any moves. And, um, yeah, another thing that I do as well when I'm riding through traffic, I try to stay... I don't like to go above um, third gear. The thing is, my bike, I know for a fact, right, that it will... Um, I know for a fact that um, my bike, it will literally pull in every single gear, but if a situation does arise, I can I know that I've got the power to sort of get out of it, because my bike's got quite a powerful pull right up to um, fifth gear, but um, I find that, you know, one sometimes can be a bit too powerful and I don't want to lift the front wheel up, and uh, second gear is actually the perfect one for me. So when I'm filtering and stuff, I'm mainly in gear two, just for the fact that it's average find it enough. Over here's another traffic hotspot, so hopefully I can uh, get some uh, filtering action through the little bend. Yeah, I've got another admirer of the bike. Go on, go on, sir. Now this guy's got his indicator on, so. What I'm doing here is that I'm setting myself up on a offshoot in trajectory because I know for a fact I'm going to move off quicker than this van and that van then. In this case, I wouldn't go into neutral only for the fact that it's going to take me time to go back in gear, find a bite and point to then move off. So right now I'm just basically hovering around the biting point. So as soon as I see those lights go yellow, I know I can just literally get off over into that lane just over there because there's three lanes right here so I want to get into that far lane just so I can move back over into the middle lane once I've cleared the danger just like that but this lane actually leads into a bus lane so I'll just stay on the outside and then I find myself in the clear. I think once you've been riding for quite some time you actually find that you, all you would literally have to do is basically reason with yourself and see if that's the best course of action to take but to be honest sometimes I, I've seen people the way how they ride it's like they don't actually think about what is the best course of action they just see an opportunity or see an opening and take it now for instance I I know for a fact that this corner is wide enough for the both of us but I'll just literally just hang back a tiny bit just because I know that drivers like to drift across lanes So this video is just basically um, sort of an informative guide on how I ride through traffic and you know I, I, I know for a fact that at one point there's going to be one person that watches this video that doesn't ride a motorcycle but you know drives cars and it's just to show that you know not all of us motorcyclists are pricks man you have people who actually ride their motorcycles properly and the way it should be ridden and just because you see us filtering don't get pissed off we're just literally easing the traffic because really and truly we're not in your way you're in our way you know just uh just uh, putting that out there look me getting to the front of the traffic that's caused one more space to become available for the car behind and if your cars weren't so big, we wouldn't have traffic, mate. Let's let this bus driver out. So, for instance, that gap there, I've seen people that would actually take that gap. But the reason why I haven't taken it is because I don't actually need to. Once this van starts moving, I can then safely change lanes. And that's what it's all about, man. It's all about that common courtesy when you're riding. Did he just buy it? 
Woo! <laughs> Oopsie. That's what happens when you bike turn. But yeah guys, I think that should conclude this episode because I can't find any more traffic to you know go play in. But um yeah. Until the next episode of Bike Sin guys, stay safe and uh yeah, keep watching the episodes, sharing and thanks for everybody that subscribed. Uh, also, make sure you follow me on Twitter at Cinderbiker, and if you play games, I'll have my gaming info, that's up. Should be in the description, and, uh, oh, what's going on here? Yeah, so I'll put that information up, add me on Steam, add me on Origin, and let's play some games, have some fun, you know how we do. Yeah, guys, I'll see you later.